Okay. Um, a few reflections on uh, Pesach, but also we'll uh, bring in the idea of Shabbos Agodol also. Um, you know, starting with the uh, idea of Sipri Tzias Mitzrayim. There are three uh, peculiar halachas. First and foremost, is it can be proven from the Rambam, black on white, that if you're sitting alone, which never happened to anybody, if you're sitting alone by uh, the Seder, you, you talk to yourself, and you ask yourself the Manishtana, even though you know exactly what you're going to answer yourself, so no... Uh, you know the answer even before you ask the question. Yeah, you, know, you do the whole seder with yourself. You know, uh, you could cut corners because you don't need to explain too much, right? <laughs> right? That the, uh, as opposed to have someone else there, you can't stop until he understands. But uh, you know, but you know, the the basic halachas of sipurit yes mitzrayim of has to be uh, question answer. And at masku begnusu mesayim b'shevach, start with the slavery and end off with. Um, yeah, our freedom, and to read the parsha of Arami Oved Avi and the drushes thereof that the Balagoda collated for us. Those basic halachas of the structure applies even if you're not explaining it to someone else. If it's just between you and yourself, that's amazing. That's something which uh, definitely needs to be understood. Uh, that's probably the most peculiar halacha, but there's, uh, there are two others that, uh, that need a little bit of explanation. And that is called Marbel Sapper Bitsias Mitzrayim Hareze Meshubach. The more the better. Now uh you know, so now there's many answers to this question, but the the question is, you know, that uh, we find in the Gemara that uh, someone went down in front of Rabbi Hanina, you know, to be Shliach Tzibur, and he started getting creative with the Shmon Esra. So he said, it's a, aside from the standard, HaKel, HaGodah, Givanora, HaIzuz, he started throwing in a lot, a lot of praises. And uh, Rabbi Hanina stopped at Saiminu L'Shvacha, the Marach, have you actually finished praising God? You know, there's no such thing as praising God adequately. And really we should be saying nothing if not for the fact that Moshe Rabbeinu in the Torah said, "Akel Hagodar Gibav Anor Asher Lo Yisa Panim V'Lo Yikach Shochad." If not for the fact that there would be that possible, we wouldn't be allowed to say that. So you stick with Hagodar Hagibor Vanora. Right? Uh, you know, you uh, say what we're licensed to say. You're not allowed to say more. Right? Uh, because uh, to say more is less. Yeah, and then the. Uh, and he gives a marshal over there. Uh, King has. You know, millions of gold, and you praise him for having tens of thousands of silver. You know, you come up short. We can never praise our Kodesh enough. We only say what we're licensed to say. I got to give a vanora. Right um, now, uh, even that, you know, uh, even that, where there's a, uh, there's a, even got to give a You know, so everyone knows maybe perhaps uh, another Gemara in Yuma. That uh, by Chorben Abayis, Daniel and Yermio stop saying Gibor and Nora. You know, the Goyim, you know, are beating up on Amiso Aye Gvurosov. You know, where's his greatness? You know, where's his might? If the Goyim are beating up and uh, and the Goyim on Machar Kim and they're dancing where the base music used to be. Aye Norosov, where's the awesomeness that they're used to doing? Really? All right, so they only said Godel. So uh, even Gibor and Nora, uh, they stop saying because. Uh, we, we don't appreciate how that could be true in the time of Chorben Abayas until Anshek Nessus Hagdola came and re and Hechzira Torah Yoshna, they brought it back and he said, Adaraba Heinein Gvurosov, Heinein Norosov, just the opposite. Those are his, that is his might and that is his awesomeness. Heinein Gvurosov, that he, uh, he holds back and he doesn't, you know, totally wipe out the Goyim like Ezu Gibor, Kovash Yitzro, the fact that he could control his anger and not. Uh, Wipe out the guy more picking on his children, and hey, nay, no rose of, and as this is also his awesomeness, Shul Mole, Morosha, Kosh, Barcho, Echume, Holy Skyim, Ben Aumos, if not for the awesomeness of God, that is awesome. That one nation could survive in exile, interspersed amongst the other nations, and, you know, and survive as a separate nation. That's awesome. Uh, interesting to note that the, the Radziner, the Sefer Sod Yeshurim, points out, you know, 
you know, what tipped off Anche Knesset Abdod, that they could have a perspective that uh, Daniel and Yermio didn't have? And the answer is because they lived through the Nase of Purim. They were, that was the Senate, that was the Sanhedrin of Ezra, the Sanhedrin that uh, Mordechai was a member of. Living through the Nase of Purim, they, uh, they, they got taught a lesson of how, you know, the Hester Ponim also is, uh, is a form of Ashgachas. They saw, Hein Hein Gvurosov, Hein Hein Norosov. Uh, but the, the point uh, for our discussion is that even Gibor and Nora were only allowed to say if we could appreciate it. So Purim gave us a new appreciation on Gibor and Nora. All right, but we have to watch what we say about HaKadosh Baruch Hu, right, and only say what we're licensed to say. And yet when it comes to Sipur Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, no bars. Kol Amar Be'areze Meshubach. Besides from the story, but to, uh, to praise, to praise HaKadosh Baruch Hu also. Like there's like, uh, you could talk and talk and talk, there's no problem of... Uh, watching what you say because more is less. That, that problem doesn't exist Seder night. Like I said, there are many answers to this question, but uh, we'll put the question on the table also. <clears throat> right, and uh, lastly, there's something that has seemingly nothing to do with the uh, you know, the story itself, but it's the din of Rebbe Gamliel. Rebbe Gamliel Merkol Shalom HaShoshtoim Pesach Lo Yatzeh Yudei Chavazvayim Pesach Matzah Mara you have to mention, you know, Pesach, Matzah, Mara. You have to uh, point, you know, and uh, explain what these uh, mitzvahs are. And seemingly, this is the halacha, even if you jump the gun, like let's say, you were very hungry. So right after Kiddush, you went straight into Motzi, Matzah. Right? And, uh, and in the days of yore, did the Korban Pesach, you ate it already. Right? Seemingly uh, totally unrelated, even if you did the mitzvah already, you will still have to incorporate into your Sipri Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, Pesach Matzah and Mora. Right? Even though it's not, uh, you know, it does little to describe the miracles of the Exodus. It's the mitzvahs that uh, we do Seder night. And yeah, that's part of the Sipur. Well, Yatsuy Dechos, we're talking about Yenat Yatsuy Yechiv of Sipri Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. The story is not complete. That's why is the story not complete? Uh, you know, admittedly, uh, there, there's a machlokas whether it's this din of Rabbi Gamliel's do rice or do rabbonon. Uh, but uh, you know, but that's that's the halacha, at least mid rabbonon, that uh, your story is not complete until you talk about Pesach Matzmar. It's part of your sipur. <laughs> What's got to do with the story? It's not unrelated, but it's like your story is incomplete without it. You know, uh, for those who eat gabrooks, you know. Rabbi Gamliel is of special significance. No, that's when you throw the matzah balls in the soup. Right. They hit Rabbi Gamliel right, by the yekas. So, yeah. Rabbi Gamliel is the signal. That's when you go to the kitchen and put the matzah balls in the soup. The, uh, anyway, the, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Shabbos HaGadol. Uh, in general, you know, before we get to Shabbos HaGadol per se, there is a very interesting uh, crossover between these two Chagin, you know, Shabbos and Pesach. Right, the, um, you know, in two sense, you know, in, uh, in two ways, and we'll, we'll discuss that. You know, first of all, in Hilchos Svirasa Omer, Usvartachem mi Machorasa Shabbos. So we know, we the believers in Torah Shabbat Peh, Machorasa Shabbos means Pesach. Uh, but you know, uh, if with the Tztukim, you know, we fought for generations on this. They want to say Shabbos means like Shabbos Cholomoed, two, uh, two Dapim in Mesechus Menachos, you know, dedicated to. All the proofs and all you know, the debates that there were with the Tztukim. So why did the Torah, you know, as it were, be misleading in this way and, and write, call Pesach Shabbos? But, but it goes the other way also. Now, you would think Shabbos uh, stands on its own. It's as old as the world itself. Right, uh, on the seventh day of creation, right? Of course, Baruch Hu made Shabbos. Yeah, it's in the end of the first Aliyah of Breshis, the Parsha of Vayichulu, 
It's like its own truth. Right? It stands on its own. It was created by God already. It's as old as the Genesis itself. Right? And yet, we find in the second version of the Aser Sedibris that Chazal tells the B'dibur Echad Nemru, all the, the variations that were, that the Aser Sedibris has there on Parshas Yisrael and the other uh, you know, version of them in Parshas Ve'eschanan, right, uh, which we read in Shabbos Nachamu. You know, the uh, second version of the Aser Sedibra, so like Zohar and Shamar. So we're told all the differences were B'dibur Echad. So over there, you know, in the Tzivui of Shabbos by Shomor, Siyam HaShaz Kacho, doesn't say anything about creating heaven and earth. It says, V'zacharta ki eved ha'isa v'ertzayim v'etzir Hashem al-kein tzivcha Hashem al-kecha l'asos Siyam HaShabbos. Remember, you were a slave in Egypt and HaKadosh Hu took you out and therefore HaKadosh Hu commands you to keep Shabbos. That's what it says. In total, you know, as opposed to, you know, the, you know, the version of uh, Aser Sedibris in, you know, Parsh Yisro talks about the Genesis. Right? The second version doesn't talk about the Genesis at all. It talks about Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Right? Yeah, a, what does Shabbos have to do with Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim? Right? So the second version of Sarah the whole reason for Shabbos is Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. And uh, this duality is reflected in the Kiddush that we say, uh, Leo Shabbos. You know, we say, Zechel Maser Breshis, Kiyom Tchil Mikrei Kodesh. It's the first of all holidays, Zechel Litzias Mitzrayim. Well, we mentioned like one line after another, you know, the Chazal, the Anshikas Sagdo, when they gave us the Kiddush, they alluded to the two versions, Yas Sertibas, Zechel Maser Breshis, Zechel Litzias Mitzrayim. Now, you know, what does Shabbos have to do with Litzias Mitzrayim? No, but of course, there must be a connection because. Uh, you know, as per the Indian of Shabbos Agodo. Now, the, uh, one of the sources for uh, Shabbos Agodo is, uh, is that it's a zecher for the special halacha that there was special for that generation, which does not apply for all generations since. And that was that the Korban Pesos Mechol Ba'asr was separate, set aside, it was separated as a Korban on the 10th of Nisan. That's when there was Mishchuk, Kfur, so that's a halacha that there is in Parsha's bow to separate the Korban Pesach already on the 10th of Nisan, you know, in preparation for its being sacrificed on the 14th, which was a special halacha for that generation, like Rashi brings, in the name of Masya ben Chorosh. Right? Amisol needed some mitzvahs to uh, be worthy of the Geula. Uh, but since we were so, uh, you know, uh, embedded in Avodah Zorah, right, and, you know, so we had to uh, do some mice to separate ourselves, you know, from our previous lives and from the Egyptians. And that was played out by, you know, uh, pulling and separating this, uh, you know, the sheep or the, you know, or the goat for Korban Pesach. It was a special luck for that generation to separate ourselves from uh, the Tumah that we were uh, stuck in. Right? Uh, so, the, uh, so, Chazal tell us that we have a Masera that also Yom Shabbos Haya, the 10th of Nisan that year, year came out on Shabbos. And, uh, and, and that's, the, that's one of the sources for Shabbos Agoro, because the 10th of Nisan was Shabbos. So, the... You know, the obvious question is, right, the, uh, it's actually two obvious questions that arise. Right? It was a special halacha for that generation alone, so we, why do we have to commemorate it? It's special for that generation. But you know, if it's something that needs to be commemorated, uh, so you commemorate the date, not the day. We should be doing something on the 10th of Nisan. Uh, so we have a Masara that was Shabbos. I mean, it was, it was, day of the week is not in our hands. If we, if we have to mark a uh, event, we mark it by the calendar date, you know, the, uh, the lunar date. You know, so why, why Shabbos? Was this allowed on Shabbos, picking out the carbon? No, but it wasn't. wasn't uh, oh, the question is moot. Uh, I don't have to even think about it because uh, there was no Shabbos yet. 
Shabbos was given in Mora, you know, after he left Egypt, you know, after Shvi Shul Pesach. So it was just... It wasn't, wasn't Shabbos so yet. what we're referring to it as Shabbos, you're saying? Yeah, we're in retrospect, we see it was Shabbos. In retrospect, but what? But it was an even Shabbos. Yes, yeah, right. All right, we'll talk about this. You're asking the right questions. You're all asking the right questions. I don't know if we ever spoke about this, but there is a uh, a say in Mishnah in Sefer Yitzira that says, "Karsh goes bara olamo besefer vesefer vesipor." God created His world with a book, a book, and a story. It's a Mishnah in Sefer Yitzira. Right. A book, a book, and a story. So what do you suppose that means? All right. Well, the type of thing that you have in a book, you know, uh, you know what makes a book a book? Uh, and, and sadly, we have to explain this. The, uh, all right, the, uh, yeah, well, uh, Book is, doesn't mean like a bunch of printed pages. You yeah, know, that's dumb too. That's, that's dumb. That, that's, that, that doesn't make a book. You know, the very word sefer, you know, common root with the word sipur, story, but the word sefer means borders. Like safar, you have heaven Allah, a border city. It's an ear sapar. Right? That means that there's, there's a beginning, there's a middle, there's an end. What you call, there's a plot. No, but it doesn't have to be like a plot as in a, a story story, but it means, you know, that there's a, um, you know, you know, there's a beginning, there's a development, and then there's a conclusion. Uh, and, and, that, that, and that's the proper way to uh, understand, uh, you know, what makes a book, as opposed to, you know, transcripts, you know, uh, you know, words put in writing. You know, it's, it's a chibur, you know, like an alternate word for a uh, book that, uh, that the Rishonim use chibur, it's a con- but it means mechubar, it's, you know, like the mechaber, you know, it's, it's connected, connected. You know, just uh, transcripts of uh, things that people say that, does, that doesn't, that's not a book. That's uh, that, that's you know that's to put something in writing, but a book means that it's there are borders, a beginning, middle, and end. It's a chibur, is connected. Right. Right. So what's that say about uh, what's that say about life? That we say that uh, life is a book and a story, and we'll discuss the difference. You know, between a book and a story in a second, but uh, generally speaking, you know, going to the common denominator between the two. You know, what makes a story? Who says there is a story? Now, what do I mean? You know, when when you see an event in life, you know, so you know the you know, the eyes take a picture. Look, I'm not taking. I go, I see, I see a still, right, and then. You see, you know, uh, you know what what things look like a second later. What things look like a second later. Who says there's any connection? You know, every, every moment is on to its own. Live from moment to moment. You know, just, you know uh, basically a secular perspective of time. You know that the uh, the past is gone. You know the future is not here yet. The present's like the batting of an eyelash, right? You know, uh, every, every instant is on to its own. And there's seemingly no hard, factual evidence contrary. When you say, there's a story here, that's, that's all in your mind. Right, you start connecting dots and, you know, and they did this because of this and this is the agenda and this is what they're thinking. There's no hard evidence of that. 
you just see raw facts, you know, and, you know, uh, connecting things that there is what we call a story here. There's a plot. That's, uh, that's a purely mental activity. You want to think about that for a second? Speculative. speculative. There's no hard evidence to. <laughs> there's no hard evidence that says otherwise. You just say there's an event, 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 event. Yeah. All right. Can science say that there's some type of master plan? That, that's you know the mind you know, uh, links all these things together and uh, you know and maybe the whole thing's just a product of imagination. It happens all the time. That's the halach of being sure to be down the kafs right? When we say there's a destiny. Another way of saying it is that there's a story to life. There's a beginning, there's a middle, there's an end. Everything is leading to that point. That's what you're saying. Another, talk about it, there's a destiny. In other words, you're saying simpler, down to our terms, there's a story here. Now we know, you know, we, ma'aminim b'nei ma'aminim, we believe we're living a script. But not, uh, we'll get into this in a second. You know, but we, we believe we're living in a script. And in a sense that, Istako by Raisa, Ubora Alma. Of course, Bahu first, you know, wrote the Torah, Black Fire and White Fire. And then from that, he, he built the world based on that. Uh, which means, you know, reality is following a script. All right, now, uh, and that's the first book that the Sefer Yitzhir is referring to. There's a safer. There's the safer written before creation. All right. Black fire and white fire. The Tyra. Well, I, I don't remember talking talk about black, maybe I black fire, white fire. Never no, no, it's a chazal. In what way the Torah exists? And black fire and white fire. That's a. It's Lashon Chazal. Eish Chor Al Gabe Eish Levana. In that way, you know, the manifestation of terror before the world's created, before there's such a thing as ink and parchment. However, it's, it's a muscle for also big ideas, but uh, it's uh, beyond the scope of what we're going to discuss today. Right. Right. We believe Right, that uh, now we'll, we'll talk about uh, you know to what ex- uh, to what extent everything is scripted. To what extent there's a little bit of latitude for free will. We'll discuss that in a second. Uh, but the um, you know, we spoke about in Der Hashem. We keep on mentioning. We got six thousand years. We got six thousand years to play, right? And then game is over. You know when uh, when we enter the seventh millennium. Following the, the pattern, the Shabbos pattern. The Ramchal wrote this in Derech Hashem that every week is like a mini destiny. Six days connected to 6,000 years, and the Shabbos, you know, uh, is connected to the seventh millennium when Akarshu shuts everything down, you know, in order to pave the way for Olam Abba. That's why Shabbos also, Me'en Olam Abba, it's the seventh, the function of the seventh to shut things down so you could, we could move on in the eighth millennium. And that's the way, like we learned in the Dark Hashem, you know, every, you know, if, if you'd be spiritually per- perceptive, you'd see every week, you know, is a new reality. You know, uh, life is now on a higher plateau because Shabbos closed the circuit and now starting next week, we're on a higher level. And we move towards the end of days, towards the seventh millennium, one week at a time. And it's more. The seven days, then the seventh day, you finish that, you know, that shlav, and now you're one step closer to the seventh millennium. Move closer to achris hayom in one week at a time. Right? To those who are spiritually perceptive. Right? Uh, to those who aren't, you know, it seems like it's just the same old story. <laughs> Back to the rat race, you know. Uh, it looks so... Uh, like... 
like the Pesach says, you know, by Noach, you know, of course, we talk about the four seasons, it's lo yishbosu. Four seasons never ceases. And from there we have the halacha that a ben Noach, sheshavas chayiv misa. Right, he's not allowed to keep Shabbos. Shabbos has nothing to do with him. You know, the goyim live in this endless rat race that's not going anywhere. Right? You know, the opposite of a story. The story goes on, chapter by chapter. All right? And that's part of what Shabbos represents, that, you know, you know, life is leading somewhere. Yom Rishon B'Shabbos, Yom Sheni B'Shabbos, until Hayom Yom Shabbos Kodesh. And it comes to that point. And uh, like we said, our chapters are, you know, they're week-long chapters. They're year-long chapters also, you know. So we'll discuss. But, but that's the basic, basic machlaikas, uh, you know, between us and, uh, and the secular world. Is there a story? Is there a story here? And the second person says, well, uh, there's the life of the moment and that's all there is. And uh, there is no destiny. That means there is no story. There is no reason why. In a story, there's like a theme that binds together all the moments and all the events. And uh, what do you call the plot? You know, it could be also called the master plan. It's, it's the same thing. Now, the idea of Shabbos is that there is a destiny. Right. But here's the thing. Right? Uh, Shabbos alone says that God has a plan. Does have anything to do with us? He'll do his thing. And he will not be deterred. He'll get what he wants. You know, but you know, am I a player? in that game. Everyone knows the famous Medrash that uh, after years, Adam Rishon bumped into Cain. And, uh, you know, uh, yes, you, know, you, you killed your brother. What happened with that? He said, I see Chuvah in his Pasharti. I did Chuvah and I cut a deal with God. I got a commuted sentence, you know. Uh, Instead of death, I got Nov and Nod, and even that got commuted to Vayeshev Barrett's node. He dropped the Nod part, right? All right, so, so Adam Rishon says, you know, that's the power of Tshuva. I should have done Tshuva. Pasach v'omar mizmar shir liyom ha-shabbos. All right, open up his head, mizmar shir liyom ha-shabbos. So, what's the pshat in the Medrash? Right? The idea is like this. Of course, Adam Rishon knew what Shabbos was because he got grace and he wasn't ejected from Gan Eden until Matzai Shabbos. That's why he had to invent fire on Matzai Shabbos. So he made Bori Moreish. Uh, he never saw darkness till Matzai Shabbos. He sinned on the same day he was created on Friday. Uh, but he got, you know, he got a grace period until Matzai Shabbos. All right, that's, that's why you know, Adam Rishon himself uh, made a Bar Emersh, and he also made a Baruch HaMavdu ben Kodesh when he realized how Shabbos is special. He knew what Shabbos was. Right? But Shabbos is God's day. You know, you know, God rested from creating heaven and earth. Now rested, of course, means that he made a resting point. That's what it means, Ba Shabbos, Ba Menucha, that he created a point where all motion will come to rest. I mean, he created a goal. The goal is where things come to a, a resting point. Everything's moving towards that goal. And the rest is, you know, the, is the end. That's, where, that's the resting point. That's the menucha of Shabbos. I mean, it's, uh, the menucha of Shabbos is not that you, know, you just uh, goof off for 25 hours. You know, I mean, you know, it's, uh, it means you, you've reached a goal. It's like things are innately at rest. You're not just stop goofing off. You know, all right. You've done everything you can do this week. It's done. You're done. Finish line. In that sense. That's what it means Shabbos is, you know, a cultural created rest. Why is rest an act of prayer? It's creating a goal. That things 
come to a rest at. End point. Things come to a point over there. Right, but that, that's God's doing. Right? If we would, God forbid, lose the Luach, right, uh, so Yom Tov we wouldn't have anymore. Right? But Shabbos would still have. I mean, that's Allah. Right? Uh, if God forbid, uh, the, you know, we'd lose the, uh, the calendar would fall out of use, so Yom Tov there wouldn't be anymore. It's not happening this Pesach. You're still going to have to make Pesach. Not, uh, right, go back to cleaning right after the shear. Right, uh, but, you know, something like that would happen. So there wouldn't be any Yom Tovim, tovim including Yom Kippur, wouldn't be. But Shabbos there is. Shabbos is not uh, totally in Besden. You know, you know, we don't sanctify Shabbos. We have a mitzvah to make Kiddush, but it, it, Shabbos is sanctified. You know, God sanctifies Shabbos. It happens naturally. Sun sets on Friday. Shabbos comes in. It's God's day. The question is, what does it have to do with us? So now, uh, you know, with, without getting uh, too deep in what Shabbos and Chuv have to do with it, what, what Adam Rishon learned from Cain was, if there's such a thing as Chuva, Shabbos is that God makes the world right. Chuva means that I could tap into the power of Shabbos and make things right also. That's why Pasach Vamar Mizmar Shiliyama Shabbos. That's what Cain taught Adam Rishon. Taught him about Chuva. That, uh, that the Shabbos prince with Akkarz Baruch will put things right. Everything will eventually come to a grand reconciliation. And you could tap into that power. And it's called Tshuva. It's one of the many uh, applications of the power of Shabbos. All right, but, the, uh, but the question is, what extends... Yeah, of course, you know, Adam Rishon was special. He was a creation of God himself, so you would say Adam was Jewish, you could say. Because right, he was Yitzir Kapov Shah Kodesh Baruch Hu. Right? But the, um, you know, the generations that came, like we learned to the Derech Hashem, all the other generations came because of, you know, they are a lower form of humanity as a result of Chet Adam Rishon, not the humanity that God created, the humanity that man created after the Chet, you know, and reduce the level of humanity from which come all the goyim. We learned Derech Hashem, section 2, chapter 4. Right? Not the type of man God created. Right? So we call it not Jewish, therefore. Now we mentioned this a few times. That's why Amish was called Goy Echad Ba'aretz. Right? The one nation. The one nation that was meant to be. And God only wants to create one nation. I don't know, we mentioned this from Isaac Hover that when man went from Kosnos Or with an Aleph, vestments of light, to Kosnos Or with an Ayin, vestments of skin, that's when it went from one nation, Aleph, to 70 nations, Ayin. 70 nations of the world came okay, because of Chet Adam Rishon, when man went from light to skin. Right, yeah, so, you know, so let's say Adam Rishon, who we call, you know, what we would call Jewish, Besod Atem Kruim Adam, you're called Adam, and the Goyim are not called Adam. Right? But yeah, from him onwards, you know, there's no one uh, Jewish. Right, there's no one that could tap into Shabbos. Shabbos remains God's, you know, so God has a plan. But, you know, we're, we're just pieces being moved around, you know. So for us, there is no plot. For him, there's a plot. He has a Right. And that's where Pesach comes in. Right. And, and there's a very interesting interrelationship between these two. You know, these, these two Chagim are a, have a chicken and egg type of relationship. Chicken egg paradox is uh, Shabbos and Pesach. Because right. Right. Pesach, we were taken out, we were separated to be a uh, different nation. And that's what made Am Yisrael a nation that could have Shabbos. Right? So without Pesach, there's no Shabbos. On earth, that is. It remains God's day. Shabbos on earth is a special nation that's been chosen to uh, be his people. And therefore you could enjoy his day. And that's what Pesach does. All right? But there's a problem the other way. All right? That Shabbos is Yom Tchila Lemikroi Kodesh. It is the first of all holy days. 
And the Zohar says that all, you know, all the Yom Tovim are, you know, they get their energy from Shabbos. Shabbos was the original creation of Kedusha. By Baruch Kim by Kaddish also, all the other Yom Tovim draw from Shabbos. So yeah, this is what I said, you have a chicken and egg problem. Right? Without Pesach you can't have Shabbos, and without Shabbos you can't have Pesach. Shabbos is the uh, Shoresh of all Kedusha, but Pesach is what makes Am Yisrael receivers, you know, that could tap into a special nation that could tap into Shabbos and hence have Shabbos and have all the other Kedushas that flow from it. And I can understand, you know, uh, you know what was going on over there. The the, the uh, bind, the uh, quagmire that Amisro was in at the time of uh, Yitzias Mitzrayim. The um, right, you can't have Pesach without Shabbos, right, and you can't have Shabbos without Pesach. Right, how do you break out of that? The chicken and egg problem. All right, so Shabbos there wasn't because it wasn't a Pesach yet. Right, we, so since there's no Jewish people yet because we weren't separated, Am Mikarov Goy Mikarov Goy. All right, so we can't have Shabbos yet because we're not that special people yet to have Shabbos. All right, all right, all right. But you can't have Pesach without Shabbos either. So what our Kodesh Baruch will do. So he gave a special halacha for that generation, right? That you know what we at that in that generation was called the tenth of Nisan because there wasn't Shabbos on Earth yet, right? But it was by no coincidence uh, the day that was destined to become Shabbos. It was the seventh day of the week. So what do we do? Hakadosh Baruch said, separate yourselves, right? And the act of separating Korm Pesach was Mishru, Mishru, Chazal Darshan, that with that they were Mechavin. It was like when you pull the animal, so Mishru Yedechem Me'avod Zora. you're pulling away from Avod HaZorah, V'kul Achem Tzom Shul Mitzvah, and take the Tzom, you know, for Mitzvah, or another Lashon Chazal, Kues Atzmechem, take yourself for Avod HaSabore. Right? We had to separate ourselves, you know, to be a different nation, quasi-separation sort of tapping into Shabbos. But it couldn't be called Shabbos yet because we hadn't gone through Pesach yet. All right, but this renews itself in every generation. It's not necessary from that point onwards. From that point onwards, now we have Shabbos. So Shabbos every year, you know, is like we say, Hamavdu ben Kodesh l'chol ben or l'choshech ben Yisrael amin. Shabbos itself makes that separation between us and the other nations. All right, so Shabbos HaGadol performs the function in every year of, uh, of being the Hachona for Pesach. And Pesach needs this special Hachona. These two Chagim are so interconnected with each other. All right. Shabbos being the Shorsh of Kedusha, but Pesach being the Iker as far as making us the worthy receiver for Shabbos. That means that Pesach is not really like the other Yom Tom that's a derivative of Shabbos. Pesach helps supplement Shabbos because there's no receivers for Shabbos without Pesach. And it's special like the you know, Shabbos goes. It's very special. It's like, it's like another half of Pesach. That's why some people have the uh, minog of reading the Haggadah on the Shabbos Haggadah. That's so why it's called Shabbos Hagolo, the very big Shabbos. Because this Shabbos is uh, also, it's, it's half the story of Pesach. It's, uh, it's inclusive of Pesach, it's inclusive of all the Shabbosos that there'll ever be. Because uh, this was like, uh, this was the Shabbos that empowers Pesach, and Pesach, you know, in turn, makes it possible to keep Shabbos. That's what's so big about this Shabbos. It's like the elemental and root Shabbos for the whole year. Right. 
But Pesach is a lot more than just the ability to receive Shabbos. You know, it is uh, a Kodesh Baruch Hu now put his story in our hands. You know, there's a famous saying, the media doesn't report the news, the media makes the news, right? Now, uh, not to chas to equate ourselves to the fake news, as the president calls it, right? but uh, you understand that, you know, without changing the text, you could read from a script. And if just by putting the accent on certain words, right, well, especially if you have free reign with the punctuation, you put a lot of spin on the story without changing one word from the script, right? You know, Lama said, that's the Torah Shebech and the Torah Shebaal Peh, right? Torah Shebaal Peh puts a lot of spin on what the Torah Shebech says, a lot, you know, and without changing one word in the text. You know, with the drushes, with the uh, explanations, with the cross-referencing, you know, I mean, we've done, like, may ayin tachasayin means money, you know, and we didn't change the text, right? There's, you know, the book and how you tell the story. That's Tor Shibachsav, Tor Shibalpeh. There's a great deal of comment that could be uh, put. And that's Ami Sol's role. Akash Bahu wrote the book, We Tell the Story. Right. And and that's where there's plenty of room for free will and creativity, even though there's a script already. Because uh, there's a safer. There may be a safer. Right? But then there's the Sipur telling the story. We read this in yesterday's Haftorah. Akarfu says, Am zu yatsarti li tihilosi yesaperu. This nation I created for me, they tell. They are misaper, tilosi. They tell my glory. Uh, Korshul says he's you, know, he's, you know, he's not letting Paro give in. He's going to harden his heart. Leman saper shmi b'chol I want people to talk about me. And Amiso tells that story. That, uh, and that's this, you know, and so uh, being his chosen people is, is not just, uh, you know, to be close to him, but, you know, uh, that book that he wrote, we're the ones who tell the story. And, and that's how the Hanhaga is in the hands of Am Yisrael. Because there's so much latitude in how you're going to read that book. Right, uh, if we do good, so you would see how it's true that, uh, that Avor Hashem pays. If we do bad, the same message will come out, you know, that crime against a Kurdish group doesn't pay, right? The message will be the same, you know, in the global sense, but it will look very different. Whether the Danhog will be chasodim or dinim, that's all in how we tell the story. The text won't change. The message of the text will get across. The question will get across with chasodim, gets across with uh, dinim. And that's all in how we tell the story. Yeah. What we say and how we act, that's acting it out. Right. And that's how the other book is getting written. The other book is the book, you know, at the end of time, we're going to have a book to read. Right? How the story unfolded. How, from the book of Black Fire and White Fire, how we were misoperant, that happens in the middle, that's the middle phase, how we tell it. And every, the way we tell it is the way it gets written. And there's like another book that's in the making and in the writing. You know, the book that we wrote. Now, the truth is that, uh, you know, uh, there's a mini of this every year. Right? Rosh Hashanah and Pesach. Rosh Hashanah, the three books. Sefer Chaim, Sefer Mason, right? Sefer Tzadikim, Sefer Shem, Sefer Benonim. In small, God writes another chapter. You know, uh, you know, it's like a transition of, you know, like, uh, 
There's the big book that's already written. There's like a, a mini book that gets written on Rosh Hashanah. Right? And that's when God's king. Ramam HaKadosh Baruch Hu on Tishrei. Right? But when did they coronate the uh, Jewish kings? Nisan. God writes the book on Tishrei. Right? But we tell the story in Nisan. And that's Rosh Hashanah and Malchei Yisrael. Malchei based David. They used to count the years by Nisan. Nisan was like the Rosh Hashanah. Because that's our Malchus in telling the story. God's Malchus is in writing the Sefer. Our Malchus is in the Sipur. Now what does that mean? I'll give it, the Gemara says like this. Right? Uh, and that's where you'll, you'll see the results springtime. Right? God says on Rosh Hashanah, X amount, it's Gemara, X amount of gallons of water fall. That's he decreed. Am Yisrael wasn't very good. He decreed a very, very sparse, very, uh, very little rain for that year. But what happens, Am Yisrael does tshuva, right? So what does Akkadosh Baruch do? He doesn't change the gzera, right? The exact same water will fall, but it'll fall exactly where it's needed, on the fields. It won't fall, you know, won't be flooding the streets here. It won't cause the sewers to overflow. Well, the water will go exactly where it's needed. And it could be as if it was plenty of rainfall. If every drop goes exactly and only where it's needed, not anywhere else, no waste. Right? So the script didn't change. Right? But the story changed. Because Ami so did Shiva. Right? And that's how we tell the story, as it were, the way we act, not just the way we talk, but the way we act. And now the without changing the actual edict, what's written in the book, X amount of gallons fall, but it fell exactly where you need them, and it could be even more beneficial than a year of plenty of rainfall if, it, if every drop fell exactly where it's needed. And the same is true the other way, the Gemara says. All right, so Ami you know, Sol was very good on Rosh Hashanah, so who decreed lots of rain. Okay, Ami Sol, unfortunately, you know, doesn't keep the, uh, the level that they were at. So Akkadu says, fine, all this rain will fall. It falls on the highways. It makes... It makes flooding. It, you, know, it, eh, you get the same amount of water and in the way you would never want it. And the fields don't benefit from that either. Right? So that's, you know, the script is the same. This amount of water falls. Right? And the, uh, just the way the story unfolded, which is in our hands, we tell the story. So without changing the script, right, it look, could look very, very different. And this very much is a very good model to understand to what extent everything is. There's a there's hashgacha pratis on every detail, and there's a destiny, and yet there's still free will. There's the sefer and there's the sipur, and that's Tishrei and that's Nisan, and generally that's you know it's not just aviv. When you see how many, how much crops actually grow, you know how you told the story. So you see the story unfold. <coughs> that's our malchus. And that's what penetrated the world. Leman Sapra Shmi Bachala Oretz Sipur Yitzias Mitzrayim is is the revelation that there is a story of life. You know, there's a destiny. There's Hashgacha. Like all the storms say, from Yitzias Ram Yisidi and Muna and Hashgacha, Kajgul controls the world. Right? It means that, that's, that means that there's a story to life. There, there's a destiny. There's a destination. And, and, and it's within life also, but not for everyone. Right? Am Yisrael lives that story. We live that story. The other nations are there to hear it from us. We are the players of that story. We're the characters of that book. So it's not that Akrashul has his plan and it's above and, you know, just like the, the cats and the dogs and the livestock are also part of that story. No, no, no. We are players. We are players in that story and it's our job to communicate to any intelligent being that there's a story. That's our function of being or legoyim. that there's a story to life. There's a purpose. As I say, call it a plot. There's a plot. It's the same thing as saying there's a destiny. Same thing as saying there's a purpose. These things are all the same. None of these things exist in physical reality. These are all in the mind. These are all mental connections, mental patterns. But we're saying it's true. It's true. There is a master plan. 
It's binding reality together. That's leading to somewhere. So Shabbos was the beginning of it. You know, Shabbos is HaKadosh Baruch Hu's plan. Pesach is that that plan not only, you know, is revealed, but Amisol gets coronated to be players, players in that story. We're the characters of that book. The rest of the world's just watching. They're just watching. And if they want to hear the story, fine. And if not, you know, then they'll never know what they live for. But they hear the story from us. We're the players. We're the characters. And uh, not just some characters, you know. It's, it's in our hands to tell the story. And that puts plenty of spin. Not open-ended, can't deviate from the script, but there's plenty of latitude to make a lot of difference, hopefully for the better, but God forbid, yeah. Other way also. All right. And that's why Seder night, even if you're just sitting here alone, you tell the story. Because the story of Sipri Tzisraim is the story of life. On a deeper level, every year, that's what it means, every year, right, every generation, reality gets liberated again from some level of evil. Like we've been learning in the Dar Hashem. We're gradually in a way that maybe we can't see moving towards Tikkun. Always moving towards Tikkun. And that's called Yitzias Mitzrayim. That's called that we're being liberated from the, from the hold that the Sitra Achra has on life. And so Yitzias Mitzrayim is going on. Yitzias Mitzrayim is the story of life itself being liberated from the evil and moving towards Tikkun. Shabbos, God created the story. Pesach is that now we have been made characters of the story. And we're living it out. Telling it. Living it and telling it. That's why the two are so interconnected. And they have the common denominator. You know, of, uh, that there's a story to life. There's a destiny. Right, and uh, and the avod of Sipri Tzias Mitzrayim, it, it is, it's a renewal of the story of life itself. Right, and so even if you're sitting alone, you tell the story. Because it's a renewal of the koch, of the fact that there's a story to life itself. Yitzias Mitzrayim is the pattern that life itself is following. That we're being liberated from the Sitra Achra and moving to a higher place, moving towards Tikkun. Before Yitzhak Mitzrayim, the world was going nowhere. The others believed that there's a destiny. They believed it. But the world wasn't going nowhere. And that's why Shem Vever didn't even bother. He didn't try to change the world. It's hopeless. God will make the world right when he wants to. Shem Vever, Noach, everyone. Avram Vinu believed that things could be better. That's what he believed. Right? And Akarsh Baruch Hu paid him back with Yitzhak Mitzrayim. And so it's very wrong. We talk Kel Shakai. What's Kel Shakai? What does that word mean? You know, that shame. So the Gemara says, Chagia Shomer Lolamodai. Said the world is like this. This is the way the world is. The world used to, it was expanding. Achagar Chashu Lolamodai. Die. The world is, you know, the world has its pattern that doesn't, you know, no, that's stuck in. Right? So even though Avram Vinu believed in the name Yud Kei Vav Kei, he uses it, you know, throughout breaks, but I only showed him Kel Shakai, Shomar Lo Lamo Dai, that the world is, you know, this is, you know, the world is stuck in a certain pattern. But, Ushmi Havaya Lo No Datiam, the name Yud Kei Vav Kei, I did not make, didn't reveal to them, they knew about it. And that's when Yitzhak Mitzrayim comes, now the Shem Havaya is being revealed. The world is moving towards Tikkun. So even though on the surface there's still the shame shakai keeping the laws of nature in place, right? but secretively behind it, you know, it's been revealed. It's not so secretive anymore. We're just uh, behind it in a way that Am Yisrael knows at least. Am Yisrael knows. All right, the world is now moving towards a higher place. 
And that started from Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim and onwards. That's where the story gets started. You have to look at it. The whole Bereshus on Toa Achor Selechem, like Rashi says, the Torah could start from Achor Selechem. The whole Bereshus on Toa Achor Selechem is what we call in the literary world prologue. It's all prologue. The story gets going from Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, from Achor Selechem. That's what Rashi means. The Torah could start from Achor Selechem. Everything until then is a prologue. Right. The others believed, you know, but at Akar who showed everything they believed in at Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim and onwards. And that's what Akar Shu promised Avram Vinu about Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Right, right now you're going to have to take it on faith and you're not going to see any difference in your own lifetime and all the nefesh Yasu Bechar and all burnt out. What did Avram Vinu have from everything he tried? And he had one. He had Yitzchak. According to some sheets, Eliezer fried out also and became Ogmel Chabashan. There's a medrash like that. Eliezer of Rome became Ogmel Chabashan. Even Eliezer he didn't have. He had Yitzchak. That's all he had from all his life of preaching. Couldn't change the world. Could even change the nefesh. Uh, even nefesh also Bechoron. All right. The world started changing, and everything that Avram Vinu worked for came to fruition from Yitzhak Mitzrayim. Right. Right. That's why if you're sitting alone, right, you tell the story, because this night, Sipri Tzitzrayim is the story of life itself, and there's a renewal of the power of the story. There's a strengthening of the power of destiny on Seder night. Strengthening of the power of destiny. It's a strengthening of the story. And that's why I call it Marabella Saparism. On this night, there's no, there are no holds, there are no bars. Because the Sipri Tzestraim is the story that's inclusive of all stories. Everything. Everything that ever happened to us in the future. Shavuos, Sukkot, Hanukkah, Purim, all progress that we ever made is all rooted in the story of Yitzhak Mitzrayim. That's like the, the story that, you know, that uh, all what happens in the future are just more chapters to that story. And that's why on this night we're allowed to say and say and say, and you can't say too much because we're renewing every possible... On a specific day, you only say what you understand, so keep it to God, O Gibar, Nora. More is less. It's on a specific day where there's a specific mentality, there's a specific specific light, specific, you know. Uh, but Pesach night is not specific. It's, it's the story of life itself. It's an endless story. You know, that's why I call it Marvel, Sapper, Reza, Meshubach, and I were licensed to say and say and say and say. And everything that you say makes a difference because this is the night where it's, it's not specific. It's general to the whole 6,000 years. All right. So you should pray for God the final children? Like all those people? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's just has a different nuance. That there's a renewal of the power that, it, that, there, that there's a destiny to life. That's the unique energy of Lela said, Sipur Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. But you're not done until you say Pesach Matzah Mora. Right? Because there's a, because there's three things we got to get straight. All right, uh, three things you can't forget. You're not done telling the story unless you say Pesach Matzah Mora. Aside from the obvious, you know, Avadim Hayinu, Masu Benusim, Sain Beshevach. Why question answer? You know, it's another. Uh, look, uh, go to my website. We have an uh, entry on that. It's supposed to accentuate that we're in a different world order. But you know, the uh, but the idea of Pesach Matzah more. What these three things represent. Pesach Hashem Pesach Hakoshgu Abatein Mitzrayim. Abateinu. Binokvas with Tsrayim. Vespatenu Hitzu, he jumped over us. 
So, what does that mean? All right, so, uh, first and foremost, all right, what that means is that Am Yisrael lives in a different dimension than the Goyim. What does it mean? Just skip over us. Go around. Yeah, do right, do left. Right. Jump over. So the Pshad is like this. You know, the, uh, and, and this has to do with the fact we weren't allowed to leave our houses. We're in a different dimension. It means that we were like sunk in a different dimension and the Mashchis went in a straight line. That's when he jumped over us. Right? He didn't go around us. You know, I mean, we were like, he went from the Mashchis, from his perspective, you know, people were, in Egypt were dropping dead in a straight line formation. If you'd be watching from birds of you, they're falling like dominoes in a straight line. So, and it's as if the Jews weren't there. That's what it means. We were in inner space. That's what it means. Stay indoors. We're in a special inner space. We have to understand that we live in a different dimension as, as the Goyim. So it means skipped over us. Meaning, meaning to say that he, it was like, you know, he walked right where we were and it's like we weren't there. We live in a different dimension. And that's why we have Shabbos and they don't. It's Saturday, right? And it's only Shabbos for us. It's not Shabbos for them. We live in a different dimension. That's why we tell the story and they don't. They, if they want, they can hear the story. By listening to us or watching what happens to us, depending on the way we act. And that's what it means. Even though it's Saturday for everyone, it's only Shabbos for us. We're in a different dimension than they are. We're living the story. We're living and telling the story. They're just watching on the outside. So that's what Pesach represents. Right. Of course, we were saying we're in a different dimension than they are. Everyone in Egypt dropped dead without exception. We just weren't in Egypt. We're in a different dimension. That's what means skipped over us. Right. Inner space. Right. What does matzah represent? Hashem shlohui speak but say come. Right, Lachmitz. Now it's very strange. Right, yeah, this is a question that should bother any thinking person. That was on Pesach day. They were on the run. They left on Pesach morning. Right, but they were commanded the night before with the Quran Pesach al Matzus and Morim Yochlu. That means there's two different matzahs. There was the matzah of Lila. Said that they were they prepared by divine command. They had to have the Quran Pesach with matzah. Read the Pesukim in Parshas Bo. Then there was the matzah that they baked on their way out. You know, and that's why it says, you know, uh, it wasn't mitzad, you know, the mitzvahs of Leila Seder, which they had done the night before, and they had the matzahs that they baked then. There's new matzah. There's matzah that they're baking on the run. Right? As they are going to say, shall always pick matzah, niglem, melch, malchi, amlochi, makarish, borachu. Right? That, you know, uh, we have to realize that uh, we are uh, bound to our Kurdish borachu's will. Right. You know, so even though we generally have free will, you know, uh, to be boicher, but uh, that doesn't mean that uh, we serve God by choice. <laughs> That's not what it means. It just means that our course will give us that work to do. That we have to struggle and make decisions. You know, uh, you know, we have to go through that agony because it makes a big tikkun. Because when we choose against evil, we're actually negating it. But but we have to do what He wants. You know, whether we have free will or not, and that's what. Chometz represents. Chometz represents space, right? You know, puffs up. Air. Airspace. Right? So in, in airspace, you know, so there's, there's room. There's latitude. You can to move to the right, move to the left, move forward, move backwards. Latitude. Free will. Matzah. What does matzah represent? Right? No room. No room to move. We just ran. When Mitzrayim, when Akershwood was Nigla Leno, we just ran. We just ran. And now Akershwood remembers that. Right? We just 
ran. Because who revealed himself, we ran. Right? You know, free will is because that's, that's part of our job, but it's not that we serve God by choice. You know, we, we serve God because we're, we're just bonded to him. The one time that this came to an expression ever since was when we said Nasa Vinishma. You know, the famous Gemara, the Apikars told Rava, you're Amma Pziza, you're an impulsive nation. Why'd you say Nasa Vinishma? You should have asked, me, here what it is. So Rava says, you know, Tumas Yishonda, we're, we go with faith with our Kodesh Baruch, we don't ask questions. We have to do our Avoda with Bechira, but uh, not, that, that, not that that's the basis of our relationship, that we serve him because we choose to. No, 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 we're bonded. And we, we follow his Ratzon. We do our voter with Bechir because that's our job. Those are, uh, you know, that's the, uh, you know, called the occupational hazard. You know, because we wants us to face off with the evil, and you face off with the evil by being tempted by it and choosing against it. But in the Mitzrayim, right, when we first left, we were making a statement. We just run with Ratzon Hashem. That's who we are. We live in a different dimension. That, that's, and that's a chesed HaKosh who did for us. It's a famous word from Levi Yitzchak of Berdichev. He calls it Chag HaMatzis. We call it Chag Pesach. Because each one is talking about the greatness of the other. We call it Chag HaPesach who skipped over us, spared us, put us in a special dimension, like we said. But he calls it, the Chumash calls it Chag HaMatzis, more often than not. Right? Talk about what we did, how we just ran. Because said, go, we ran. We didn't ask questions. That's what the matzah represents. Lois Pik Pitsekam Lot says we didn't consider it and make a choice. Nothing to consider. No choices. We make choices only because our course will added on that challenge in our Avoida. But we are Be'etzem Avodim to our Kurdish Borhu. He wants something, we just run to do it. And that's what the Zohar says. That the word matzah and mitzvah is virtually the same word. That's missing the vav. You know, and of course, you know, that Vav is, we got that six weeks later with the six weeks of the Omer. Then we got mitzvahs by Shavuos. Chag Matan Taraseinu. Right? But matzah is, you know, the word mitzvah without the Vav. The Vav represents, you know, uh, Bechira. You know, you have to be a Godel. You have to be, uh, you, know, you can't be a minor. You have to be Bar Bat Mitzvah. You have to have, you know, be big. You have to have that space. You have to have your own space and, and do have you know the ability to make choices. But that's how Kala Koshku wants you to do mitzvahs. That doesn't mean that that's the basis of your relationship with him. The basis of it is, a, is unmitigated, unquestioning commitment. Then he adds to you the added challenge that you're going to have to make choices. So the basis is matzah. Without free will, just run. Without consideration, without choosing. When you see Gilu Shechina, you run. There was a revelation, we ran. No questions. Then, after that, you know, on that basis of matzah, you build mitzvah. There's that commitment. Now let's see, with that commitment as your bedrock, let's see how you face off when you have to, how you manage when you have to make choices. That's right. Going back to, for a second, the point you made that um, the Jews were on a different level in yes. Israel. That's so right. That the the, uh, the Egyptians just fell over it. Four fifths did not leave. Yeah, Mitzrayim. but they they died earlier than that. They died during the three days of darkness. Oh, they died. Shlosh the- me'afela. So by this time, this time, whoever was left, yes, is on a different level. Correct. Uh-huh. Okay. Good. Okay, and now lastly, Moror. These are elements we're not yotze or sibte. Said moror. Now it's very interesting that moror bismana says dorabona, matzah's doraisa, but moror is only doraisa if we have it to carbon pesach. And I'll tell you what it represents. So, you know, you should ask a question: Why is moror last? Moror should have been first because we were first enslaved. Right, and then we were liberated. So Pesach and Matzah is connected to liberation. So it should be Moror, Pesach, Matzah. A Moror, Matzah, Pesach. But you know, why have Moror last? Right. Uh, so the real reason is that you know, it's the hardest to understand. That we have to also understand 
for the story to be complete. You know, there's a theme to the story. The theme is, call my da'avdin min shmaya It's one of the themes to the story of life. Everything is for the good. Right? It's one of the themes of the story of life. That means the shibud also. was also for the good. You know, whatever it is, it helped to get out the contamination of Adam Marishan, you know, from the Chet Adam Marishan. Right? All the many things that uh, Chazal and the Zayar say about how the Shibud was important and it was constructive. Yeah, but it's easy to say. It's not easy to appreciate. You know? It's one of these things that's yeah, easy to say. Generally you say it when it's someone else's problem. Yeah, it's Latov, right? <laughs> Right, and that's why, you know, Mara's last is going to be the hardest thing to appreciate. How, you know, this, that the Sheba is also part of the story. It's also part of the Tikkun, part of the master plan. And we're not going to appreciate that until the end of days, that when we have Korban Pesach, when we have that Shlemus, that's when we'll understand how the Mara is also for our benefit. It's the hardest part to appreciate. That's why it's last. It goes in conceptual order. I said this just recently at Sheva Brachas. Uh, so, understanding, you know, uh, appreciating marriage. Chazal Darshan, Apostle, and Yitzhi Yisrael, marriage. Okay, Moshe V'chidim Baisa, Motz Yisrael, Bakoshoros. Apostle Pshat, told you about Yitzhi Yisrael. Chazal Darshan, on Shiduchim, and Bakoshoros, Bechi, Shiros. Either crying or singing, you know, depending on how your marriage is. But, you know, so I explained, you know, uh, that... Uh, you know, the Haggadah is going in the order of what's easiest to appreciate, and the challenge is to appreciate, you know, dealing with things that are harder to appreciate. Pesach, very easy to appreciate. All your enemies are dropping dead around you, and you're being spared. No, you've got no problem appreciating that. That's easy to appreciate. Matzah, you're on the run. Oh, you're on the run, you know. You don't have Yishuv Adas. That's a little bit harder. Moror, that's the hardest thing to appreciate. I mean, that's also marriage, you know. The, uh, you know, the aspects are easier to appreciate. The challenge of, you know, is to the Bechi and the Shiros, right? The Dima and the Rina. It's all a package deal, and you have to, the challenge is to appreciate it all, the whole package. And that's called Shleimus. Shleimus is when you appreciate everything, and it's Shalim. All of life experience, and all that life throws at the young couple, and everything that, all the baggage that they both bring in. That's, uh, you appreciate all of it, just. But the uh, and so the moral is only it's it's only do rice when we have the carbon pesach when we have all our madregas. It's easier to get our head around, you know, how the hard times were also part of the story. But the rabbanon instituted to do it bismanaze anyway, and still in that place, in last place in the succession, because uh, as the Radziner explains, what does it say? We said morozu. That's the possible we quote when we point to the Mara. Or, you know, they talk some, but we end off. You know, so, what does Chazal say on that word, beforech? You know, a lot of different drushes. But amongst the many, uh, we'll only mention the one that's most uh, nogea to the point that Rad Zinner wants to make. Beferach, Farach is an acronym, Beferach, they sweet talked us. You know, there's a Lashon Chazal that Power himself was initially went out and worked in the pyramids also. It's a national effort. We were sweet talked into it. All right, and that's not only that, you know, there's a Chazal that even a slave couldn't escape from Egypt. And the Radziner explains, you know, uh, people were sweet talked, like, you know, Egypt is where it's at. You don't want to be anywhere else. So it's not like they had great guards. You know, no slave would even think of running away from Egypt. And what, go to those other barbaric countries? Here I'm part of a massive empire. You know, it's like a communist society, the state. You know, everything for the state, or everything for Pharaoh. No one wanted to live anywhere else. No one wanted a different way of life. Slaves thought they had it better as a slave in Mitzrayim than living anywhere else in the world. As Beferach, they were sweet talked into it. Right? You know, and, and, and the highest level of Geula is that all, all those things that we were sweet talked into, and we were brainwashed into liking, we should now view them as bitter. Because at the time they seemed sweet. 
the gula is not complete. And that's it, you know, the secular world, you know, liberal values. Uh, this is the enlightened way. This is the kind way. We have to... Uh, we have to not only say, well, we don't do it that way, but we have to, everything that they call sweet, we have to view that as bitter. And then the gula is complete. That you're not psychologically in any way tied to it. That all the ferach, all the pain, you know, that this is the way it ought to be, this is, you know, you, know, you have to, all that sweetness, all that sweet talk has to be viewed as bitter. Yeah. And then you're really free. Then you're really free. That's why the Rabban will be more, and they're talking it less, because that's probably the hardest part, that you have to look back on the whole experience and everything that they told you. Like, you shouldn't say, oh, I have mixed feelings about it. There are certain aspects of it that are good. No. <laughs> Nothing good about being an Egyptian culture. Nothing good about it. Well, the sweet things are bitter. Although, you know, you say, have mixed feelings. So you can never work so, you know, so crazy and hard, you? Yeah. Uh, slave mentality, slave mentality. Uh, well, the Stockholm well, yeah. syndrome. You know, you, you right? I was going to say it. Stockholm syndrome. You identify. No, that. What do you mean? You know, throughout the desert, Zahar, it's a dog. Uh, yeah, they gave us fish and they gave us watermelon. You know, I was complaining. How they had, they ate better in Mitzrayim than they ate, you know, in the desert. It's not the gula is not complete until you know even the sweet stuff. You know, uh, you know, you view as bitter. So without mentioning these three things, the story is not complete. You know, Zohar, Amiso lives in a different dimension. Amiso is just follows Akharish Baruch without any questions, right? And that there's nothing good about the second life, nothing sweet there, nothing sweet. Even the things that were sugar coated, don't look at it with mixed feelings. It's the sweet stuff is bitter. All right, Rosh Hashanah, Shavu Gula Shem, we have Cherus, you know, Beguf, Benefesh, Uberuach.